Uh, we're going to be kind of zeroing on the fact that the kingdom is the original assignment of Jesus. The kingdom, the original assignment of Jesus. I believe that we have covered a lot of material already in this series, but the more I prepare myself to share this, the more I understand how off we have been as a global church. So I want to give you some thoughts to hang your hat on as we begin this segment of discovering your kingdom destiny. First of all, let's remember that the purpose for man's creation was really not to have a religion, but it was to carry out an assignment that God had from the beginning. And that is God's original purpose for man was to administrate a kingdom, not a religion. The last thing God wanted was a religion. Now he, uh, I don't know what this is we've made this thing into, but religion is a very dangerous thing because religion does not necessarily answer your questions of life. The word religion actually means to search. And we shouldn't be searching anymore if we found the answers. The second thing I want to remember is that the fall of man was the loss of a kingdom. Not the loss of heaven, but the loss of a kingdom. And the third principle I want you to remember is that the promise of redemption was to restore a kingdom. Whatever man lost, that's what God wanted to restore. So the redemptive work of the Lord Jesus was not to establish a religion on a worship experience and on the rituals and the traditions that we've developed. That was not his goal. His goal, his purpose for coming, his, his assignment was to, to restore the kingdom that was lost, that man was given by God. And then the other principle I want to remember is that the fulfillment of God's will is the reestablishment of his kingdom on earth. And I want to stress that God's will will be fulfilled when what he intended to have is restored. So God's will is not for man to really be in heaven. I want you to follow the thoughts of these principles. God's really going to be fulfilled when man is on earth ruling and administrating his kingdom on earth. That's God's fulfillment. So until that happens, God is not satisfied. God is not fulfilled. And the last principle I want to reiterate is that the program of salvation was to restore man to the kingdom government of God. That was the program design. Uh, and I, I, I like the word program. I, I put the word program here because it has to do with, with systems and methods and techniques. A program has to do with goals laid out to accomplish an ultimate purpose. So the pro salvation is a program. Salvation is not the goal. Salvation is the program. Uh, when, I, when I use the term salvation, it includes all the redemptive acts of God. For example, uh, the promise of the Messiah is a part of the program. Then the fulfillment of that promise through Mary being conceived of the Spirit, the Word of God, and bringing forth a child born of miraculous birth. That's a part of the program. And then the child growing up and and Jesus giving his life on the cross is a part of the program. Calvary is not the goal of God. Calvary is one of the goals in the program to ultimately accomplish the original and final purpose, which is what? To restore God's kingdom on earth. That is what God wants. So if you don't understand this, you're going to be stuck in a religion. If you don't understand this, you're going to literally live until you die and you'll use religion to keep you happy in poverty and depression and sadness until you die. In other words, you, you will use religion to be a pacifier rather than to be an overcoming power. 
I'm going to make a statement again, and I don't want you to misunderstand me, but I mean what I say. And that is, Calvary is not the gospel. Calvary is a part of the program that takes us to the good news, which the gospel means, which is the kingdom of God. So I want to stress again a couple of things here. Number one, God creating you was to administrate a kingdom. You are created to be an administrator. An administrator is somebody who has been given the responsibility through delegated power and authority to execute decisions and judgment on behalf of another authority. If you've been given an administrative position, if you are a CEO or an executive administrator, or if you are a, a, a manager in a department of a company, you are an administrator. And what you've been given is delegate authority to oversee a specific area in the company. And your job is to execute the judgment of that company on behalf of the board or behalf of the chairman to carry out the will of that company in that department. That's what administration is. Is that clear? That's called dominating or influencing the department, dominion. And that's what God gave man. Genesis 1.26, very clear. God's first command to man, let us make man in our own image, in our likeness, and let them have what? Administration power. Dominion over what? The territory called earth. So the department that man has been given authority over is all of earth. Not heaven, but earth. Now, if you've been given administrative authority over the department that deals with, with, let's say, correspondence, or maybe a mechanics, but you decide you want to go work in the accounts department, what do you call that? Huh? What do you call that? Mismanagement. You are moving out of your area of responsibility. You are actually illegal if you go into a accounts department and try to be an accountant if you've been given a job in another department. Well, the same thing is true of you if you go to heaven and try to take over. You are illegal in heaven. Sounds tough, doesn't it? See, religious people want to go to heaven, but kingdom people want to stay on earth because that's where they're supposed to be. As a matter of fact, uh, my boss said to me, by the way, his name is Yeshua Mashiach. He's the king, the Lord. He said to me, Father, do not take them out of the earth. Now, we praying to leave. He prayed for us to stay. Who's prayer going to get answered? I mean, doesn't he want us to come to heaven? Doesn't he want to be with him? I mean, wouldn't he really want us to be so we could sing forever and ever around the throne? That was not his purpose for you. He said, Father, do not take them out of the earth, but keep them from the evil in it. Why? Because they got the power to overcome that evil. Now, if you die, don't get me wrong. If you die, you'll go to heaven, no problem. If you die now, you go to heaven. If you're born again, you'll go to heaven. But that's not your permanent residence. If you read the Bible carefully, God got a program to get you out of heaven after you go there. If you read the Bible carefully, because you were not designed to be in heaven. That's not your final assignment. In the book of Revelation, the last chapter, 21 and 22, powerful chapters. And they, the, the book closed like this. It says, and I saw a new heaven and a new earth coming down out of heaven. How do you explain that? Because you ain't going to stay there. God going to get you on an earth to rule if you got to make a new one. Clap. That's a good basic clap. Might as well get used to the idea. So God's plan is to reestablish the kingdom that Adam lost. Now, Adam did not fall from heaven. We talk about the fall all the time, but, but we keep forgetting where he fell from. Adam was not in heaven and he fell to earth. <laughs> so we got to take him back up to restore. No, Adam fell from authority over the earth. He had dominion over the garden and he was... He was uh, beguiled or tricked by uh, an unemployed cherub whose name was Lucifer. Lucifer tricked man and man therefore became subjected to this diabolical, hideous, evil angel. And so the, the, the management contract that Adam was given was actually handed over by Adam to this unemployed cherub. So Adam is still the legal manager of earth. And I say, Adam, I'm talking about you. All mankind is Adam. We are still the legal authorities here. But the devil, Satan, Lucifer, whatever you want to call him, he has become the illegal ruler by subjugation of the legal ruler through treason. What is treason? 
Treason is when you've been given a trust and you give it to somebody else. Adam committed high treason. He was given the trust by the government of God to run the earth and he took that contract and gave it to someone else and therefore he committed high treason. And so the highest form of, of, uh, of disappointment is treason because you've been given a trust. And what did God do? In the same chapter, Genesis 3, when Adam gave the contract up, it's the same chapter that the government made a promise. And the government of God made a promise in verse 15. It says, and he was speaking to the diabolical angel. He says that it's to Satan in verse 15 of chapter 3 of Genesis. He says, I promise you that the same woman that you use to destroy mankind's contract, I'm going to use a woman just like her, and I'm going to come back into the human race myself, God says, and I'm going to crush your head. And the word head is referring to authority. You know, we think of a snake satan as a snake he's not a snake it's just that he used a snake's body originally in that chapter he possessed a, a, a snake body so he could have legal access but the head of a snake is how you kill the power of a snake isn't it yeah you cut a snake tail off he still lives so when god says i will come and my seed will crush your head he was talking about government power he was talking about the authority that that this evil creature stole from adam he said, i'm going to take back the power and i'm going to destroy your influence he's talking about government authority so what does god send jesus for well according to genesis 3 16 15 he was sending the messiah the seed to bring the government of god back to earth 